Hey folks, hello and welcome. I'm Steve Clemens, Editor-at-Large of The Hill. Thanks for joining us today for our program called COVID-19 Vaccine and the New Era of Manufacturing. I'd like to thank our sponsor, the National Association of Manufacturers, for making this timely event possible. Manufacturers have been operating an expedited production schedule for the past year to produce medical products, PPE goods, uh, other goods used for daily home use, and several approved vaccines. I mean, it's kind of a big, big lift right now. What are the lessons learned in this past year, and what can traditional manufacturing competitors stepping in to fulfill vaccine production quotas teach us about cooperation in the name of common good? and teach us about competition in the name of common good. We have a fantastic lineup of speakers, including members of Congress, medical and vaccine experts, manufacturers and business leaders to discuss this and more. And I have my terrific colleague, and I have to tell you, I'm so relieved she is here because I've been doing a lot of this stuff alone. Uh, from, she is the, our, one of our best correspondents, uh, Julia Manchester, the Hill's political reporter, joining me to, late, uh, to lead some of today's conversations. Julia, it's great to have you here it's in studio, here. in person. Yes, in uh, the love that. And, uh, and you match the, uh, the background here love with the blue. That. So thank you so much. <laughs> Before we get underway, a few housekeeping notes. You can tweet us at, at the Hill events using the hashtag Hashtag the Hill vaccine. We're broadcasting your, uh, this entire program live. We'll be taking your questions throughout the program. And if you experience any trouble with the live stream, just click refresh. It should fix the problem. Our first guest is a member of the Manufacturing Caucus and sits on the Ways and Means Committee, a laugh, lifelong Hoosier. She represents Indiana's 2nd District. Congresswoman Jackie Walorski, it's great to be with you today. Thank you so much for joining us. Look, I've been reading and following your tweets now, and you, you, know, you have commented that we are in pretty good shape, much better shape than we would have uh, uh, been if we had not had Operation Warp Speed in place, if we had not uh, had a lot of the infrastructure, uh, both with man manufacturing and vaccine discovery in place. What is your sense of things? I mean, am, am I, am I uh, conveying your thoughts uh, correctly? You are. You've been a great student of our tweets and what we've been writing and getting out there. Thanks, Steve. I'll tell you, you know, we had phenomenal manufacturing infrastructures prior to COVID, but to, to your point, what you were saying earlier, COVID brought in a catastrophe and really settled on a, a look at the vulnerabilities in the manufacturing, things like supply chains and where we get things from. One of the glaring things that we learned quickly was we were way too dependent upon China to be able to provide things like PPE, the things right. that we needed to be able to work, the healthcare as workers needed on the front line, and that we had to do something immediately to start producing those things domestically. And you know, just the way Americans are, the way Americans ship in, the way Hoosiers ship in, is when we were short of all those supplies, it, this was way, to, way before President Trump activated the Defense Production Network. You know, we were already working with public-private partnerships, PPPs, with uh, the private sector and the government sector. And I think when we look at how those kinks worked out, the kinks were worked out because the private sector led they were the experts. They're the ones that were not, that were literally going in and completely tearing down their machines and retooling them to be able to get to the crisis that was happening in the country. So I think when, as we look forward, we say, what do we learn? Where do we go? What do we do? I'm looking forward to an advanced infrastructure that was created from the grassroots ground up, which is solid, it's certain, and the private sector led the way. And I think when we look at how much better the private sector can handle something like this than the government can. We saw it, we fixed it, and I would say that's problem number one that we really have been able to cross off is the public-private partnership strength when it comes to domestic production now of PPE, vaccines, and all kinds of things that we would have if we ever face this again. So Representative Walorski, I want to ask you a complex question. Hopefully I can get it out right. But you know, I've spent a lot of time with manufacturers, and Indiana is a huge manufacturing state. We have representatives coming on from Michigan, another, you know, big muscled uh, manufacturing state. And what I've learned about manufacturing over the years is it really works in a just-in-time production mode. You know, when you're having, you know, uh, a product come in and you're reprocessing it, you're getting out, you know, storage and a lot of this is not part of the modern, as much as part of, of, of the modern manufacturing side. And, and you mentioned China and global supply chain. And I guess my question is, it's, it's one thing to talk about getting more of that supply chain element back in the United States, but it's much harder to do in a real way because it deals with regulations, it deals with you know, purchasing and pricing certainty for companies. You know, I've talked to Teva Pharmaceuticals, and that's, that's what it takes and requires. So I hear a lot of members of Congress talking about you know, onshoring 
capacity again. But I guess I want to just ask you in a real sense, is that real? Because it requires so many other moving pieces and I'm not seeing those moving pieces. I really do think it's real. Steve, I think it's the future for us to be successful. And, I, and the reason I say that is twofold. Number one, companies need, and now they know even better because they've been through this already, they need the government as far as the partner in the public-private partnership. They need the governor to lay off the regulations, number one. Let them do what they do best, which is manufacture. They're the experts. Number two, where the government can help are things like trade. They need the government, for example, on the 301 exclusions, which expired December 31st of last year and still hasn't been reauthorized yet. Mm. A lot of those exclusions were for PPE. You know, the oh. government can be a great partner by incentivizing folks in the, inside the country to be helpful and to continue to retool what they do. But the new infrastructure that we're working with today is also things like large hospitals, small hospitals, large companies understanding the need to be able to produce and hold and store and perhaps build additional storage. So I think some of those things that, that you looked at as a vulnerability before is part of the solution. You can't produce and have your own regional strategic national stockpile, which every region is going to have to have without storage space to be able to do it. But if our government comes in with a bureaucratic response to this and decides, well, we know better, we're going to regulate this and that, we're not going to bring certainty with trade policies, that's going to be very difficult for any manufacturer to be able to deal with that. I would say let's let the manufacturers do what they do best. Let's let the hospitals and all of those peripheral shareholders that have been at the table decide what else needs to happen, when and where, and let those decisions be local and regional when it comes to sharing and storing. Are, are there elements of the American Rescue Package that you think directly help that are worthy of, 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 of supporting and that are directly uh, related to the circumstances of American manufacturers in your state? Well, not that I've seen, but I've been very disappointed in what I've seen of that rollout because, you know, that was a $1.9 trillion bill with about 9% that actually brought any kind of COVID relief in it. And again, I'm gonna lean on private companies here. In my experience, in my district, when we were hit with this and we have large RV companies and boating companies and outdoor manufacturing of, of sports facilities and things like that, they took it upon themselves to lead. And they did this in such a way that the government came along as a partner to kind of open those doors. I have not seen this government yet, Steve, come alongside and open those doors with funding, with leadership of having conversations locally and engaging the private industry. All I've seen coming from the government so far is throwing so much money out, it staggers most Americans. And most of this money was not strategic to actually go to anything that really helped. But I don't think it's too late. I am super optimistic that when you put private industry in the lead and literally work on some of the peripheral things that the federal government can do, like trade policies and like certainty, I think we'll get where we need to be in a very, very short amount of time. That's, that's really, really encouraging. I have a, a question from our audience, Daniel Farachi. Daniel? This is Daniel Farachi, CEO of Grassroots Political Consulting LLC in Washington, DC. My question is, what is the best approach for domestic companies capable of expanding domestic manufacturing for critical pharmaceutical products, for which we have relied outside the country for supply, in seeking grant loan purchase orders from the federal government, especially now that BARDA is focused specifically on COVID applications? Your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great question. And it's folks like him that actually comprised the solution of networks that came forward during this, the height of this pandemic and offered to help. So, you know, uh, depending on how the Biden administration has funneled um, the hierarchy on this during the Trump administration, it was the HHS. And I will tell you that your local member of Congress can take all kinds of, of questions and applications and actually express line those to the appropriate folks in DC to help get those grants and to help get some of that money and access. Uh, during the Trump administration, there were folks that it was one call, one connection. Um, I don't think it's that way yet in the Biden administration, but you know, as the Biden administration rolls out and continues to focus on this, I think we'll have additional information. But what I would tell you today, reach out to your member of Congress, they can help you connect immediately. And the more 
private sector, manufacturing companies that come forward, the better off we are long term in domestic production, total control and, and local regional places to have our own little stockpiles should this ever happen again. Um, Jackie, we're really out of, out of time, but I got to slip in one more uh, question to you. You know, Indiana is just killing it when it comes to uh, getting people vaccinated, particularly elders. I mean, you're leading the nation, you know, the over 70, over 65. You're getting folks out there. You're meeting, you know, you're, you're you know, it, it, uh, West Virginia is another stand. So, so what's the secret sauce? What are you doing that, you know, Washington, D.C. needs to learn from? Well, let me just tell you, breaking news here, Steve. We just had our one millionth vaccine given about an hour ago. Wow. So I'll tell you, we have a great governor with a great strategic plan. Everybody's doing their part, just like what happened with COVID. The success in how we handled COVID was the feds, the state, and the local workers all worked together with one goal and one mission. And that's how we're going to do this moving forward. Just what Indiana's done, one goal get those vaccines in the arms of people, defeat coronavirus, so we all can move forward in this nation and work on our part of the American dream. Well, Representative Jackie Walorski, member of the House Ways and Means Committee, member of the Manufacturing Guide, so great to talk to you today. Thanks for joining us. You too, Steve, thank you very much. 